What is up to all my creatives out there? Charlie Pang is here. Today I'm showing you guys how to make your own graphic tees so that after this video, you guys can start your own clothing brand if you choose to. And if you don't wanna start a clothing brand, no worries at all. You'll walk away knowing a little bit more about Photoshop than you did before, hopefully. That's always the goal here. But we're gonna get right into it today. I'm gonna to focus on just using a photo for today's graphic tee, t-shirt design, merch design, whatever you wanna call it. And the reason why is because a lot of you have access to that and most of you probably don't know how to draw. So a lot of you will have access to the image that I'm gonna be using today. I love doing it this way because it gives everybody an opportunity to create something really awesome because again, not all of us know how to draw. So you're gonna be learning some really cool Photoshop tricks today and we're gonna be learning how to take a photo and make something cool out of it. So I'm gonna stop rambling now. The first thing I always do when I'm in Photoshop is I hit this create new button. This is really important because this is how we set up our document in order to actually start designing. So we're gonna hit create new. And the first thing we wanna do is go to the right hand side here, go to inches, and we wanna set this to 14 by 16, 18, whatever you wanna do right there. Whenever you're designing something for print, just make sure this is set to 300 and you are good to go. Uh, never keep it at 72 because 72 is more of a display resolution. Um, for instance, when you're displaying something on Instagram, Facebook, anything like that, that's 72 display resolution usually. Um, but anytime you're printing, again, you wanna make sure that is set to 300 resolution. And I don't worry about color mode. I'm not a huge fan of working in the CMYK color mode. The most common question I get is, why do you design an RGB? That's a personal preference, and a lot of screen printers don't really care if I use RGB because a lot of them have their own software to convert it to CMYK. Um, it's a long story, but trust me, RGB is fine. And the only other thing I do is I change the background color to match whatever merch that I want to print on. So let's say if I want to design for black shirts, then we'll just set a black background color and then hit create. Everything else can stay the same. Now I need to go to the internet and grab a photo. I already have one pulled up on unsplash.com. If you didn't know this already, Unsplash is completely free to use for, for personal use and commercial use. So we are completely okay to use this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this over and then we're going to paste that in place. And I do wanna resize it, so I'm gonna hit Command T on my keyboard. I'm not gonna to focus too much on teaching you guys every little shortcut. In all honesty, if you don't know how to use Photoshop, you should probably take a basic Photoshop course before getting into this stuff. But for the most part, I will explain everything that you need to know. The layout that I'm currently using, by the way, is 3D. So if you want, you can switch it to 3D. I don't really like these layouts, honestly. Like I wanna close this. Um, so if anything, let's go to Essentials layout. So on the top right next to the magnifying glass, you wanna just switch it to Essentials. That way we're all on the same page. I have my layers palette right here. That's really all we need. So we could title this photo by double clicking on the layer one name. If you double click on that, you can change the name to whatever you want. I'm just gonna simply name this photo for now. And what that's going to do is give me a nice little starting point. We can even duplicate it to create a copy in case we need the original copy later on. But let's go ahead and focus on a really simplistic design, maybe even a street style design for this particular one. I wanna make sure I'm selecting photo copy and then I wanna go under quick actions and then hit select subject or remove background. Let's try remove background first. It did a phenomenal job, which is never the case, I promise you. It never works that good. But it just so happened to work pretty good for this one. So I do wanna touch it up right here. I, I don't know if you guys can tell, but his beanie right here is a little weird. So I do wanna kinda go through that and just clean it up a little bit. So I'm making a selection with my polygonal lasso tool, and we're going to fill this with, so let's say black, to delete. So black deletes, white adds. And now we have a really clean selection, but I'm just gonna quickly go around and make sure that everything looks great. This turned out way better than I anticipated. Really worked too easy. I almost felt like I cheated there for a second. But anyway, um, what I wanna do is focus on editing him first before moving on to other design elements. So what I wanna do is actually right click on him and convert this to a smart object because now I already have the selection the way I want it. So we're gonna make that a smart object so we can start making adjustments to him. So the first adjustment that I do wanna make is go up to uh, image adjustments and we're going to add a hue and saturation adjustment to him. And the reason why is because I wanna take the saturation and completely desaturate him just like that. And then hit okay. Another adjustment layer that we can make is levels. And this is really easy to use. Basically you're working with shadows on the left, midtones in the middle, 
And on the right, we're working with highlights. So what I want to do is just kind of mess with some of these levels and kind of get a feel for what they do, right? So we're going to go down here. That's way too dark. We don't want to lose detail on him, but I do want to darken him just a little bit. Add a little contrast is basically what I'm saying. I don't mind that. But again, I'm kind of losing too much detail at the bottom there, and I don't like that. So I'm just going to bring the midtones down to the right a little bit and mess with the highlights a little bit. I kind of like the muted color, personally. I think this looks okay. Another thing that we could do to really take this photo to the next level is add a camera raw filter. And I really like working with camera raw filter because you can do a lot of really amazing edits with it. It basically works like Lightroom in Photoshop. First things first, I want to take these shadows up because I want to bring more of that detail back in him and maybe even raise the exposure up a little bit, lower those highlights so they're not popping too much. And then we can raise the clarity and the texture, even dehaze it if we needed to raise the whites maybe, lower the highlights a little bit more, add some contrast, and we should have something that looks like this. What I wanna do is work with a shape actually. I think this will be better. So I'm gonna to go to the triangle and we're just gonna create a triangle like this. And I'm not gonna just keep it upright like it is right now. I'm actually going to rotate it and just make it look really random and kind of unique, if that makes sense. I don't want it to be too perfect. I wanna click on the shape again. I'm gonna go up to the fill on the top uh, left here. We're gonna make that a transparent fill. And then on the stroke, we're gonna make this a really poppy color. Let's say maybe more of a teal color. Let's try that out. You know what, I think red would really pop. Or maybe even like this color. Yeah, I think this will look really cool. This will look super dope with a purple color on him. So I think I'm gonna go with this kind of pinkish red color. And we're gonna tilt it just a little bit more. Kind of like that. This looks really, really cool. And then I wanna add a outer glow. So I'm gonna go to effects down here. We're gonna go all the way down to the FX on the bottom. And then I wanna add a outer glow. And what this is going to do is obviously add a glow, right? But we wanna select the color and we wanna make sure we color pick that same pinkish color. Can't even honestly tell exactly what color that is. But yeah, and then we just wanna mess with these settings. So I'm messing with the spread, the size. Um, you can even mess with the noise if you really want it to be noisy, which I don't really like. But um, the goal here is just don't go too crazy with it, honestly, because then it starts looking super fake. So I'm gonna actually make this a 14 stroke, just like that. I want it to be very subtle, if that makes sense. And then um, from here, we can duplicate it once, and then I'm going to drag it above him. We're gonna rasterize this add a layer mask. We're going to go to a soft brush and then we are going to just delete this top part right here. And I think this looks pretty cool the way it is. And we can even delete the shoulder there too. Just make them popping out of it kind of like that. And I like the way that looks a lot. I think it looks super, super nice. So I want to add a layer mask to him. And then we're going to just kind of paint at the bottom here, kind of make it kind of fade in, maybe even cut the bottom of them off actually, because I think that looks a little bit better. It's a little cleaner. And then from here, what I wanna to do to really make him stand out is I wanna add a gradient map above him and then we're gonna force it inside of him. So I'm gonna hold an option on my keyboard. I'm gonna hover between the gradient map that we just added and the photocopy too, which is him. And then we are going to just click once and it's going to add a clipping mask. And then from here, we can start messing with some colors. So the first color I had in mind is more of a purple color. So I'm just gonna mess with these colors real quick and see what we can come up with. And some of them might work really well and some of them might not work. And then, you know, if you don't like the way that looks, you can even change the blend mode. As you can see, you can do some really interesting stuff with these. I don't want him to be too intense, so I'm just going to kind of lower the fill a little bit. Really cool trick, if you double click on gradient map right to the right side of the name, you can see at the bottom here it says blend if, and it's on gray. We can keep that. And then what we could do is we can actually change the blend of the dark. So we can take away that purple from the darker areas if we want to and make it look a little nicer. Sometimes less is more. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, so we're doing really good now. So I have everything pretty much in place the way I like it. I'm going to duplicate this triangle once at the bottom and we're just going to add some random triangles kind of on the outside. Again, we're really making these random. To finalize this, I am going to try to add some text actually. I decided to. I'm going to hit T on my keyboard and just probably stick with this rock grotesque font, extra wide, extra bold. This is a font that actually comes with the Adobe font kit. If you pay for Adobe Creative Cloud, you can get this font right now. But um, if not, use any font that you want. We're just gonna type in luxury street. 
I don't know what to, I don't, I literally don't know what to type in. I'm going to make this much smaller. I want it to look really trendy. And then let's go ahead and change the color of this to something else. And then below that, we can add some other text and we can put established in 1991. And we can make that much smaller. Again, it's kind of a trendy thing, but I think it looks kind of cool. And then on this color, we can make it that, that, um, other color and I think it's fine the way it is so we're gonna go ahead and copy that over to a different mock-up now let's say this vintage tea looks pretty cool paste that in place and just kind of put it where you want it to be yeah the bottom text is a little hard to read but keep in mind it's not going to print that smaller obviously and if you wanted to you could just make it bigger but I think this looks really clean and we did that in a matter of minutes. So um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty much the workflow. If you guys wanna make your own designs, this is a great place to start. Find some images online, um, put them in Photoshop and just mess with the blend modes, add some text to things, mess with shapes. And if you don't know how to use Photoshop, the biggest tip I can give you guys right now to get better is to simply learn Photoshop. It helps a lot knowing how to use the program and knowing where everything is. But uh, today we use some really basic tools in Photoshop to create this made in the streets design. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you should be able to make your own designs now using some of the skills that I taught you today. Um, if you guys need to, play the video back over and over again. Practice always makes perfect. Remember that, guys. Share it with your friends. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.